Hello, I'm Vicky Donnellan. I'm a curator in the Department of Greece and Rome, and welcome to my corner. Today I'm going to talk about this storage vessel, or um, storage jar, or amphora, which was made in Athens or around Athens between 530 and 520 BC. An amphora, or storage jar like this, would have been used um, to store either wet or dry goods. Some of these things were found in tombs, so they, rather than being used in day-to-day -day life, they might have been used instead um, for a kind of funeral reuse to, to honour the, the dead person in the tomb. This particular example was found not in Greece, where it was made, but in Italy, in Chiusi, which was a major Etruscan settlement. And very many tombs have been found in that area uh, with Greek pottery in them. So it is quite likely that this example may have come from, from that funerary context. It's an amphora in the black figure technique, and it shows the two Trojan War heroes, Achilles on the right and Ajax on the left. It's created by moulding the vase, shaping the vase, and then painting the figures onto the vase with a clay slip, which is basically a diluted version of the same clay. Um, the figures are painted, and then the details, all these amazing fine lines that you can see, are scratched into that painted clay slip using a fine metal stylus. What I love about it is the, the use of detail, the fact that it really, this use of the narrow metal stylus really lends itself to picking out these intricate details, um, the patterning uh, that you get on the, the figures, and things like these beautiful sort of snail-like curls in the hair. And when the pot is fired in a kiln, with a clever kind of control of the way oxygen goes into the kiln, the painted surfaces turn to this beautiful glossy black, while the rest of the pot turns red. The wonderful thing about Greek painted pottery is that it carries these beautifully painted scenes. They can be scenes which we think are of everyday life, um, generic scenes of the things that people in ancient Greece would have done, but they also very often carry scenes which we know are stories from myth. And this example has the two Trojan War heroes. Um, so Ajax here is labelled with his name, so we know without a doubt that this is Ajax. Ayas is inscribed on the pot. And the other figure is inscribed, where is his inscription? Over here, Achilles. So that's Achilles, the other Trojan War hero. Interestingly, though, this is a scene which isn't described in the literary texts um, about the myth of the Trojan War. It's a scene which is only known from pottery. And it's not only known from this pot, it's known from around 150 examples of Greek painted pottery. The most famous, perhaps, is one in the Vatican Museums, which was painted by the uh, Greek vase painter Exekias. This particular example is painted by someone that we now, as scholars of Greek um, pottery, call the Lysipides painter. And that's a name that's actually made up in um, modern scholarship from the inscription on this actual pot, which says uh, Lysipides Kalos, painted down the middle here. His works are identified by the style, by similar style, and their name has been given to him um, by John Beasley, who is a very famous scholar of Greek uh, vase painting. This inscription, Lysipides Kalos, means uh, Lysipides is beautiful. Very regularly on Greek pottery, you get these inscriptions with somebody's name and beautiful. And that's part of that context in ancient Athens of admiration of the, uh, the male human body and um, a culture where relationships between men were, were a common part of society. So the pot shows the two heroes, Ajax and Achilles, sitting, each of them on a sort of box with another box between them. And they're playing a game, they're playing a board game. Uh, you can see the counters lined up along the top of the box-like table. Um, Ajax is reaching down here, looks like he's about to move one of his counters. Um, Achilles is gesticulating towards him. This context for this scene is the Trojan War. Um, so the story uh, is that the Trojan Prince Paris has visited one of the Greek kings, Menelaus, 
and he's seduced or abducted his wife Helen and taken her away to Troy. So the Greek king Menelaus, together with his more powerful brother Agamemnon, has gathered a great fleet of Greek warriors to sail over to Troy, um, which is on the, the west coast of what's now Turkey, and get her back. So the Greek heroes gather Ajax and Achilles are, are two of those heroes, and uh, they are the, the preeminent heroes. They're the, the ones that are, are thought to be the greatest fighters. They set up camp, they start besieging the city, but Troy is a formidable opponent. It's a well-defended city, and it holds out against the siege for 10 years. Surviving texts about the Trojan War tell us a lot less about the first nine years of that 10-year siege than they do about the last year. So the whole story of the 10 years is told um, in what's known as the Epic Cycle, which is a whole series of epic poems um, which were composed by storytellers, oral storytellers originally. Those included the famous Iliad and Odyssey by the poet Homer, but there were other poems, and one of those was the Cypria, which told the early part of the story, and that doesn't survive. Um, it's only known from brief summaries. And so this, this scene is not a story that's known from elsewhere. So what we're to imagine here is that this is two heroes, two fighters, who have had to do a lot of waiting around, and they're, they're passing the hours by uh, playing this board game. This scene was perhaps so appealing to pop painters because of the, the beautiful way it fits on the shape of an amphora. So on this example, the spears line up uh, with the, this part of the handle and the shields line up with this part of the handle when you're looking straight onto the vase. There's also interesting things that different artists do with the, the way the, the two figures relate to each other. So in Ezekias's version, um, he shows Achilles with his helmet on and Ajax with his helmet off, so that Achilles is naturally slightly taller and dominant in the image. And he actually also shows the results of the dice throw at, um, in that particular game. There's an inscription on that version of this pot, of this type of pot, which says um, four on Achilles' side and three on Ajax' side. And there's a clear sense that, that Achilles is winning. On the other hand, on this example by the Lysippides painter, the two characters seem to be much more evenly matched. They're both wearing their helmets, so they are, they're similar in stature. They, there's no obvious sense of which one is winning. It's much more about sort of equality between them. They look like friends, they look like count comrades who are uh, comrades in arms, enjoying themselves in a, in a moment's pause in the battle. Although there is still a sense in that world of competitive Greek heroes that of course they are fully armed. You see Ajax is wearing his corselet here, you see the, the sort of spiral shape of the shoulder of that metal um, corselet or breastplate. He's wearing his leg protectors, his greaves to protect the front of his shins. Um, and they both have their spears at the ready, their shields behind them. You imagine that if, um, if one of them were not to play fair that they would soon be, be at each other's throats. For the ancient users of uh, a pot like this, either in Greece or in Etruria, these myths and these stories would have been incredibly familiar. They'd have known the whole thing, they'd have known what happened in the Trojan War, and they'd have known how it ended for these characters. And unfortunately, their endings were not a happy ending. Both Ajax and Achilles um, die during the Trojan War. Achilles, of course, famously is shot by Paris. Um, the version in which he's shot in his Achilles heel is perhaps a bit later, but he certainly dies young. He has this, this famous fate that's described by um, in Homer's Iliad, that he, uh, he's got the choice. He can either have a long and uneventful life in obscurity, or he can have a glorious life, fight at Troy, and, and die as a young man. And Ajax also um, dies at, at Troy. So a pot like this, showing these two uh, very kind of masculine, perfect heroes, um, but who are doomed to, to die relatively young, perhaps that had a, a particular resonance for someone who might have chosen to put this uh, into a family tomb, a tomb of a, uh, for a family member, that kind of message that even the brightest and the best have to die. So one of the reasons I chose this object to talk to you about today is that it really um, is a great example of what objects can do to fill in um, areas of stories where we don't have the literary resources to enrich the picture that we get from those literary sources. 
and also to to add sort of nuance and interest to some of those characters that we know um, from the literature too. And it's certainly true that the art of, um, of Greek pottery and also um, in sculpture and other media does tell its own versions of the story. They're not just pictures illustrating the texts, they're their own versions. They develop and enhance and, uh, and change the story in their, their own imaginative ways. Thank you for watching my Curator's Corner. If you'd like to watch other Curator's Corners, you should be able to see them there. And if you'd like to know more about Troy and the Trojan myth, the British Museum has an exhibition coming up soon and all the information should be there.